I like to subscribe to all that you go to the top of this. It's Netflix time. This movie's called Sorry to Bother You. Spoiler alert, let's just get it. So we start with this guy named Cassius Green, played like, uh, like Keith Stanfield. Yeah, you might remember on a show called Atlanta. He was in the movie Get Out. So yeah, there you go. He's talking to this guy by the name of Mr. Anderson. He's trying to get this telemarketing job. So apparently he lied about working at a bank from 2014 to 2016. And he got found out because Mr. Anderson actually worked at that bank. But the thing is, he ain't tripping off that because he realizes Cash has got gumption. So he ends up giving him the job. And their motto is Stuss. So what the heck does that mean? It means stick to the script. So he lives with his girlfriend named Detroit. That's just the name they gave her, I guess. And they're having this very morbid conversation about death. Then he goes back to try to give her the business. All of a sudden, the door flings open and we realize he's living in a garage. So before he gets to work, he's watching TV. He's watching this commercial about worker-free hospitality. My bad, it's called Worry Free. Now, I think it's an area where they're supposed to set up housing for people and whatnot. Because around this time, a lot of people were looking for jobs. Keep in mind, this is like the 80s. And back then, there was a decline in employment. Then we found out the place actually belongs to his uncle, Serge. And he ain't paid him rent in four months. He's like, look, man, get this money in like two weeks. But they're going to take the house. So he's about to get it popping. He's getting his job. He's got this car his uncle gave him. The car's all smoking at the gas station. It's fucked up. It's pretty bad. He tells the gas attendant 40 on two. But he ends up giving him 40 cents. That face tells it all right there. What the fuck is 40 cents going to do to that damn gas tank? I'm guessing his job ain't that damn far. So I thought he gets to work and sees this golden elevator. Is that Amari Hartwick? Back again. Once again. Well, anyway, he can't go through there. He's got to take the steps. So he gets some advice from a head manager. Tells him to make those calls and sell some product. Of course, his first day on the job is terrible. They go to this club spot with his best friend, Sal. Real name, Salvador. He goes in a VIP room thinking to himself, like, when the fuck they get a VIP room? The password is upscale elegance. But there ain't nothing upscale and elegant about this shit. Back at work trying to find his footing again. And he gets some advice from the legendary Danny Clover. He tells him to use his white people voice or he ain't gonna be selling shit. He's like, yeah, sure, I'll keep that in mind. He tells the marketer and he's still getting too old for this shit. For those who don't know, that's a Lethal Weapon reference. Anyway, then they have a group meeting. And this chick's name is Diana DeBacheri. Bitch, your last name is DeBacheri. And she's full of all that shit. After the meeting, he meets this guy named Squeeze. And they ain't getting no money out there like that. So on the low, they're trying to form a union against the Regal View Company. Why is he so familiar? Oh, Walking Dead. Maggie's boyfriend before he got killed off by Negan, goddammit. Spoiler alert, my bad. Well, this is all spoiler alert anyway. And he got killed off four seasons ago, so you already know what it is. So I guess that's a double spoiler alert. Both shows on Netflix, you already know what it is. Meanwhile, Detroit flipping signs and whatnot. I know back in the day, you used to get paid $8 an hour to do that shit. Cash just picks her up, and the crew rides out. They all go to the bar, they talk about this union shit. Then they're watching the news, and they see all these violent protesters outside of Worry Free Headquarters. This guy named Steve is the CEO of Worry Free Headquarters. Worry Free Incorporated, whatever. And people think Worry Free is more like a slave operation, because they have their workers. But he reassures them that's just ludicrous. Back at the crib getting ready for work. And Serge is like, hey, look, man. Give me as much money as you can, but honestly, I don't think it's going to be enough. They're going to mess around and take the home, man. So he's thinking to himself, damn, I got to do something to save my home, man. So at the job, he discovered this white person's voice, and he getting popping with the calls. After work, back at the spot, they're watching a show called I Got the Shit Kicked Out of Me. I'm like, really? It's like the craziest thing ever. So Squeeze lets us know, ironically, this is like the most popular show for a reason. It's got 150 million viewers. He's like, yeah, man, it's pretty fucked up. Danny Glover even bought a damn t-shirt. I'm like, are you seriously? <laughs> Then he gets outside with his boys, they talk all this union stuff. And I gotta say, Detroit is always switching up her earrings. The beginning, her earrings had murder, kill on it. Another pair of earrings with dildos. Now she's got her ex-boyfriends on death row on her shit. Apparently she loves art and creates stuff, and she creates her own earrings. So there you go. Next day going to work, why is she carrying him on his back? And Squeeze got the troops together, he's ready to get that union popping. Everybody's ready to unionize. But if you look at Cash's face, I'm not so sure he's on board with this. He goes in, he's looking at the golden elevator again. And we did see Amari Hardwick hop out of it. And they call him Mr. Blank, because apparently we can't know his name. No, they actually bleep out his name when they say it, but why though? This ain't no Beatrix kid or Kill Bill moment, what the fuck? What the heck is his name? Anyway, Squeeze leads the troops and they start to unionize it. And you can tell he's kind of on board. But they pull him in the office by himself personally. Because he's making money for the co company, they promote him. He's going to the upper floor. So what's he going to do? He going to unionize with the troops or is he going to take it to the upper floor? Because you got to keep in mind, he's about to lose the house. So he takes the promotion. He finally gets to go up the golden elevator. Deborah's all on his wheels now. She wants to get on the business. They get in the elevator. She got to type this long ass password. And he gets to the second floor and he gets to see Mr. Now apparently he's got to use his white people voice the entire time up here. You got to be in the habit of being phony. Turns out they find out that Worry Free is actually their biggest client. The place that's supposed to be giving free room and board, but also being accused of slave labor. He's like, yeah, this all sounds nice, but how much am I going to get paid? He's like, yeah, a hell of a lot more than you was working with downstairs. Later on, Squeeze goes to meet up with Detroit, you know, because they're just good friends, right? You smooth operator, you. He tries to give her a ride home, but he, she's like, nah, I'm waiting on boo. But the thing is, he was working all damn night. Matter of fact, when she got picked up by a friend, he was still at the office. He ends up meeting her later on at an art gallery shop. 
She was mad at first, but then they get high and everything's all good. A couple weeks go by, and apparently he hasn't really been talking to his friends like that. And he tells them he got promoted, he's working for the band, and he's basically not gonna be helping y'all cause. And then Cash this out, get into a little beef, and then Danny breaks it up. Look at that face, you know what he's thinking to himself. You know he's like, I know I'm getting too old for this shit. Back to business. So he closed in this big deal, and now Cash just gets to go to this party where he gets to meet Steve himself. Don't worry, free Steve, CEO. And he make enough money to save the house. Sir, so like, thanks, you saved our lives. He got a sexy, flexy car now. And now him and Detroit living in a nice-ass apartment downtown. Meanwhile, TV, the Regal View telemarketers are on strike. They set up the picket lines. Detroit feeling some type of way about how he's changing and whatnot. He ain't caving his street. Then he's a spazzing out on that in a big fight. She tells him, look, you go back there, you walk through that picket line, we're done. He makes his decision. Basically, he ain't stopping now. He going back to work. But he ends up getting hit with a can of soda. The lady said, have a cola and smile, bitch. Then we have Mr. Such and Such, because they won't give us a fucking name. Tells him, you ready to meet Steve? Popping off the night. But his girl Detroit got a function, and he's attending her art debut. I mean, it's not really his girl no more, they established that. And the friends are there too. And Sal's like, what are you, star now? Cash's like, what the fuck are you talking about? So apparently the video of the girl that threw the coke at him got 11 million views. They've been making memes out of it, all that shit. And on top of that, she about to get endorsements out the ass. And then we had Detroit's presentation. So here we go. So, okay, wow, what the fuck? So apparently they were supposed to throw certain stuff at her. It was like water balloons filled with paint and stuff. I don't approve of the cell phones though, that shit would fuck you up. Cash tries to stop it, but then she reminds him he got a party to get to. And then the party. And he meets Steve by himself one-on-one. Squeeze enjoyed the art show. And you can tell they've been close for a while now. They get the kissy, you know he giving her the business. Meanwhile, Cash is wandering around. Steve is telling stories to all these random chicks. He tries to get Cash to tell him a story. You know, maybe about some gangster shit. Then he asks him to rap. You can see where this is going, right? So the entire room is nothing but white people and Mr. What's-His-Face. You don't get the gist of what I'm saying. Well, figure it out. So pressured into rap and he gets on stage and he said he couldn't rap when he got up there. And he got up there and spit some pure D unmitigated absolute dumpster juice landfill leftover junkyard residue ultimate trash. So then he just did a random ass hook. Let's just say if this was different circumstances with all these white people repeating what he just said, they would have been killed in the wrong parts of town. So Cash feels some type of way about all this. I'm thinking to myself, why is his head still bleeding? You got all this money, but you ain't have enough uh gauze or first aid kits to patch this shit up? That shit happened to you literally earlier this morning. It's fucking nighttime. So what's the, what Mr. What's his name talks to Cash in his real voice this time and tells him to go meet Steve. He's in a room downstairs. He goes down his hallway with all these neon colored green doors and he meets up with Steve and he convinces him to sniff some coke. Cash says, fuck it, he ends up doing it. He tries to get Cash to watch this video, but Cash is like, man, I gotta go to the bathroom real quick. He ends up stumbling in the wrong door, and there's a guy in the stall. The guy's like, man, can you help me? He's like, dude, I'm not about to help you pee. So he's banging to get out, so he opens the door, and a fucking horse creature falls out. You're like, what the heck is that? He runs back into Steve, who apparently has a gun in his hand all of a sudden. So Cash, understandably, is like, okay, what the fuck is going on? So he gets him back in his room, and he sits him down and makes him watch the video. This video basically shows him through some prehistoric shit, and it shows him the workers being efficient at their jobs, but they want to come up with a way to make them stronger. So he made some type of drug that turns their regular workers into horses. Mixes their DNA or something like that. Basically, they're horse people. The thing is, it's a type of drug that you sniff. So he's thinking to himself, wait a minute, am I gonna turn to one of these things? What the fuck did you give me? He's like, no, nah, man, I just gave you regular coke, man. You're just too hyped up to even feel it. Just relax, dog. So Cash asks why he picked him. And Steve feels like he's a fucking genius. And he wants them to be the Martin Luther King of his people. He wants to lead him in a new generation and whatnot. Have stronger, faster workers for production. Working for Steve. Man, this shit is bonkers. Next thing you know, he's back in his apartment. Why is his head wound worse? You tell me he don't know how to wrap that shit up? And you got hit with a fucking aluminum can that shouldn't have did that much damage to your forehead. I don't give a damn if it was a full can or not. How soft is your muscle tissue? So he tries to tell the newspaper subscription about what he saw last night. Like they gonna believe that bullshit. Then they got commercials about this coke and a smile chick. They got Halloween wigs and shit. I know Cash is looking like, this is fucking ridiculous. So he finally goes to the doctor's office, but he doesn't even go there to get his forehead checked. He checks to see if his penis got bigger, because he thinks he's gonna turn into a horse. Then he goes to Detroit. She's like, nah, you good. All right, clearly this headband is not working. Look at this. It's still bleeding. You know what, I'm not messing with this topic no more. I'm just gonna leave it. So apparently he sent some video footage to a phone from last night. He doesn't remember what he sent, so what could this possibly be? So apparently his video footage of horses talking about we're hurting. He's got footage of those workers telling him to get back in there. And Steve's in the footage too, trying to get him back in line. Now, wait a minute. Last I checked, he saw the horse motherfuckers that ran out the room. That's when he ran into Steve who had a gun in his hand. He was in the room with Steve afterwards. So let's just say his phone fell out of his pocket, right? None of the people in there saw a phone on the fucking ground, including Steve. How the hell was he even able to send that footage to Detroit when he never went back to get his phone? Well, maybe he did get his phone, but still. How was Steve and all his co-workers so stupid to not see a damn phone on the ground? I put too much thought into it, but I can't help it. They kind of kiss and make up, he's a giving it a business. And all because of the simple fact he's definitely done at work at that Regal View. Her earrings are crazy. Tell Homeland Security we are the bomb. 
priceless. So he makes a good call, gets some connects, tells him he wants to be on a certain show. He gets on the show, and basically what he's trying to do is put the video up there, but he gotta get his ass whipped first. Why? Because he's on a show where people get their ass whipped. Then he gets on other shows, spreading the gospel and whatnot. He's reenacting change in the worry-free department. But because it seemed like rhetoric, worry-free stock market actually increased. So yeah, man, it didn't work. He goes to the spot to make up with his boys and he got a plan. So they're like, what's good, man? What's the plan? So they're at the rally. You already know what it is. The strike is on. And the armed guards and Mr. What's-His-Name are like, ha, 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 ha. Time for us to bust through. They thought they was getting through, but they did. They hired the real football team. They had rock statues and everything stopping them. And Cash was leading the troops. He's on the other side. The other side of justice now. Then they call up more of the cavalry. They got tear gas. They're ready for the beef. The cat's about to hit up plan B. Now what's plan B? Before that happens, a guard hits him all across the head. Next thing you know, he's locked up in a truck watching all this shit going down. It's nighttime. Next thing we know, the horse people join the fight and they let him free. So you're thinking to yourselves, how the hell did they join the fight? Well, apparently he figured out the combination from the video. Snuck it to the laboratory and let them all out. Why it take them so long to get there? Who knows? Him and his boo get the kiss and everything's all fine and dandy. Next day he talks to his man Sal. Cash gives him the new car he had and he moves back in his uncle's house. With Detroit, they fixed up the garage and got it popping. You wouldn't even know it's the garage for real. But as he closes the garage door, what the fuck is going on with his nose? Then we get the scene from Steve's house. And for the video cam, we got Cassius Green that turns into a full-fledged horseman. Lee is up troops. Attack his house, they about to fuck shit up. So it seemed like your typical less fortunate story about people rising to power and whatnot, confronting the man. And then towards the end, it turns into some horse-breeding minotaur shit. Sorry to bother you on Netflix. Check it out. Like, click, subscribe, do all that. You are on the top of this. Look, these are these, 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 these,